First, I want, I want to apologize that I'm not able to speak in the language that's most comfortable for you. But I've learned over the last day and a half or two that you understand English. And the language that I'm going to speak to you is a language that all Jews understand. It's the language of the heart. I want to thank again my dear friend, my host, Rabbi Yitzhak Satan, for all the work that he put in. And thank you, and Rabbi Yeshua, and another tzaddik that I just met, Rabbi Jack, right? Uh, that I just met, and the Rav over here, and all the chaverim and the chaverot of this beautiful, beautiful Kihila Kedosha. I want to thank each and every one of you. I can't tell you the deep, deep feelings that I have, the impressions spending some time last night with some of the Haverim going to school today to speak to the children in the school and now being here together with you. A few minutes ago, the beautiful Balei Nagina were singing a song that was actually composed by a friend of mine, but the words, the words are very old. The words are, of course, from the teachings of the Nachal Novei Mekachachma, of Rabbeinu Nachman, Shechutai Yagelin, Valkal Yisrael, Amen. Vayikar Lolof Ached Kla. It's a little bit different than Lukutei Maran, but that's the basic point. Kol Olam Kolo Geshet Tzar Ma'od. Vayikar Lolof Ached Kla. The main thing is not to be afraid. You know, when I was today in the school, I was talking to some of the students. I spoke to them together. And a few minutes afterwards, they're afraid. Almost every question was about Why are we suffering? Why is this suffering going on? 15, 16 year old boys and girls that should be enjoying their lives now, b'simcha. A boy was telling me he can't sleep. He's so anxious over what's happening and he can't stop thinking about. He said this to me right when we were going into the elevator. He said he cannot stop thinking about death. Hashem Yachem. So many of them have seen, just like many of you have seen, horrible, horrible images, pictures that we never ever thought we'd see again since the time that my grandparents were killed in the Holocaust. We never thought that we would see such a thing of Jewish babies being put into an oven, Hashem Yachem, of old people, young people, babies taken away. There's a tremendous fear. And with the fear there comes anxiety. So I want to talk to you about how beautiful the Jewish people are. I want to talk to you We've seen so many ugly things lately and ugly, hateful faces of people who want to destroy us. I want to talk to you about the beauty of Am Yisrael. The beauty of Am Yisrael. Try to listen with a full heart. At the very, very beginning of time, our Chachamim tell us that Hashem took Adam Arishon and Hashem took him and flew him over Gan Eden. And Hashem said to Adam Arishon, Re'ei, look and see. Kama yafe olami. 
Who can see how beautiful the world is that I created? Tain da'atecha. Be very careful. Shalot kalkel. Be very careful. Don't destroy. Don't ruin the beautiful world that I created. But whatever happened, happened. On the first day of man's creation, there was a kilkul and there was a churban. And Adam and Chava ate and they listened to the voice of the Nachash Kadmoni, of the snake. You know, in the Sefer Kabbalah and Hasidut, that tree, the Eitzada Tovera, the tree of knowledge, good and evil, in this very Makdoshim, the tree is oftentimes called the Ilana de Sveika. Ilana de Sveika means Ilan Hasafek, the tree of doubt, the tree of uncertainty. What does that mean? That means that before they ate from that tree, the world was so beautiful and it was so clear that Hashem was Hashem. And for whatever reason why they ate, we're not going into now. But everything was so clear. And the snake, Amalek, Hamas, Hezbollah, everything that was evil and dark was on the outside. But it was clear. Zetov, Vizera. This is good and this is evil. But since that day that Adam and Chava ate from the tree, from the Ilana de Sveka, the tree of uncertainty and doubt, the world has become a place that's unclear. Unclear. Omrim la or choshetach la choshech or tov is ra, ra is tov. It wasn't that on the tree there was some good fruit and some bad fruit. Every single molecule of that fruit was a ta'aruvet, was a mixture that brought into our lives, into this world, terrible, terrible confusion. Ad kedekach, that here, I, here we are in Tavshin Pei Dalit, and I'm standing in a school of beautiful Jewish young men and women, and it, it breaks my heart and all of our hearts that they're asking, how do I know that Hashem loves me? But it's not just that. One of the boys that I spoke to today for a minute, I could see in his eyes that he was in very deep pain. I mentioned it to some of the, to the principal, to the, I think to Rabbi Yitzhak, we were talking. I saw in his eyes tremendous pain. And the principal just whispered in my ear that he's going through something very, very hard with his father, something very hard with his father and his family. There are so many children now that are growing up in homes where they're not even certain that their parents love them. It's not clear to them. Oh, the father might say, I love you, and he takes him for a, an ice cream, or he takes him to, a, to see some game, sport. But that child in his head and in his heart is uncertain. I feel yelled katan. Tsair, who cried Achal mi Ilana de Sveika, the Mivinim. He ate already from the tree of doubt. Where the way that it should be is that every single one of our children should be filled with the light of certainty, of Bihirut, of clarity, that my father loves me. My father in this world loves me. And Avinu Shabashamayim, Avi Shabashamayim, Ohevoti. 
It's not just a song. That my father loves me. If you and I believed a thousand percent that Hashem loved us, if we believe that, do you know what our tefillot would be like? Do you know how easy it would be for us to stay away from looking at things that we shouldn't look at? And we have the same thing between husband and wife. I spoke a little bit last night. The same thing between husband and wife. That when they stood under the chuppah, when they were married, Olam Barur was clear. Ani oti. I love her, she loves me. We're going to go on this journey together. It's going to be, it's going to be a beautiful life. In a beautiful Gan Eden that Hashem has shown us and brought us together. And before you know it, I'm sitting with these people in my office. He already said this, she already said that. They're already talking about going to bed, then you understand what I'm saying. The Gan Eden is not a Gan Eden anymore. Something happened. Hashem says to every couple under the chuppah, I'm bringing you into a beautiful world. Don't destroy it. He says to every single parent when the baby is born, everybody's so proud when they have a baby. They go on showing everybody pictures. Look at my baby. Look at my baby. I have the cutest baby in the world. The sweetest baby in the world. But the very same baby is now 16 years old and his eyes are cracked and his heart is broken because he doesn't believe that his father or his mother loves him. Ever since that day of the, of the tree, from that moment on, the snake became part of us. The snake is no longer some disgusting, ugly thing outside. Wearing a kafia, you understand, right? The snake is already inside. Bilbulim, confusion, uncertainty. A rabbi sitting in yeshiva, he's a teacher in the yeshiva. There's a boy in the class, and the boy makes a little bit of trouble. And the rabbi thinks that this boy is already not a good boy. And he tells the boy something like this, and he looks at the boy like that. And the boy, when he's already 70 years old, since the time that he's a child, has not been successful in his yahadut, in his Torah mitzvot. Why? Because that rabbi looked at him the wrong way. And that Rebbe said to him a bad word. And that boy is confused and doesn't believe that Hashem loves him either. If my Rebbe doesn't love me, if my Rebbe hates me, then what does Hashem think of me? If my father in this world hates me, Khalila, then what does my father in Shemaim think of me? So listen to what's happening now in the world, Heaven. You know we have such a schus, it's such a terrible time that we're living in right now, but it's the most beautiful time. It's Erev Mamish, Erev Mashiach Tzikainu. And why is it that our Neshamot had to be here at this time? It's a mystery. But there's a famous Gemara in Bava Batra, Daf Yud. I'm sure that many of you know this Gemara. The Gemara tells us that Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, that Rabbi Yosef, the son of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, died. But then miraculously, he came back to life. He left the world for a short time. I'm not going to go through the exact story in the Gemara. But he died and he left the world for a short time. And his father asked him, what did you see? When you left the world, what did you see? So you remember? He said, Olam hafuch ra'iti. I saw an upside down, reversed world. Olam hafuch. Elyonim lamata, tachnonim lamala. Those who were in this world, very, very, think, everybody thinks they're very great. Over there, not so. And over there, it's the opposite. Things are olam hafuch. Olam hafuch. A, a, a reversed, upside-down world. 
And his father, the great Tana, told him three words. Olam barur ra'ita. You saw, you had a glimpse of a clear world. You had a taste of what it was like before the confusion, before Adam and Chava ate from the tree, before the Ilana de Sveika, when it was clear what's right and what's wrong, what's good, what's bad, what's holy, what's impure. A world without Sveikot, without confusion, without uncertainty. Olam barur ra'ita. The purpose of our lives, listen carefully, the tachlit of our lives is that we're now living in a world that is an olam hafuch. If you never thought so, it's very clear now. Nachon? That we're living in an upside down world. The tachlis, the purpose of life is each and every one of us in our homes, in our learning Torah, even when we learn Torah, every single page of Gemara that we learn, every din that we learn, ulai kacha, ulai kacha. It's a machloket. We're not certain. We don't have Mishnah Bura, Halacha Bura, B'makom Echad. We don't have any more the clarity of how it was when Moshe Rabbeinu came down from Hasinai. All of our learning, even though we love it and it's exciting, it's enjoyable, but our learning is filled with sveikot. It's not an olam barur, it's not a clear world. All of us who have learned, you know that when you come out from the Gemara, you oftentimes don't feel that you have it. It's a low barur. What does Hashem want of me? How many times in your life do you want to that? And it's not clear exactly. So the tachlis of our lives is to live in this olam hafuch, in this world of the, where the snake is creeping around inside inside the United Nations, inside the Congress. Do you know what the Congress is in America? Do you know that there is, there are Congress, there's a Congresswoman in Michigan? Who, who, is, a, who is an open anti-Semite? I don't want to even say her name. And this is, this is the snake that has crept into the world. And Hashem wants us in our lives, to live in such a way where we're constantly clarifying this is the truth. This is emet, this is sheker. This is tov, this is ra. Chazal tell us that Kol HaNivim, Nitnabu, all the other Nivim besides Moshe Rabbeinu, when they would say Nivuah, when they would say prophecy, they would say Ko, Ko Amar Hashem. Ko Amar Hashem, which means Be'erach. How do you say Be'erach? Approximately. Ko, like this, like this. Kemoza, Ko. Chutz, except, Mi Moshe Rabbeinu, Shit Nabei with what? How did Moshe Rabbeinu say Nivuah? Zadavar. Zadavar. So, this is what it is. Why Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't proportionality with fighting against Amalek. You understand? Moshe Rabbeinu's life was a life of Zahadavar. Zahadavar. This is it. Listen. Talking in shul, do any of you do that? Don't raise your hand. Talking by tefillah, looking at your phone by the tefillot, by chazarat hashats, looking at your phone when a rab is talking or giving a shiur, is that tov or is it ra? No? Zera. So then why is it that there's such confusion? Zera, it's bad. Insulting, hurting, degrading. Zera, inspiring, giving chizuk, zetov. But somehow, in some way, in this world of the Ilana de Sveka, the snake has this way of climbing in. And then, even though you might know that in your head, somehow it becomes cloudy, unclear. 
So listen to this. I'm sorry for taking so much of your time. I don't come to Mexico all the time, so I'm here for, for a little bit. So a few more minutes. The Mishnah tells us in Avot, and it goes on to say, I and Tova, and so on. Whoever has these three qualities, characteristics, is a Talmud, is a student of Avram Avinu. And whoever has these three characteristics, bad stuff, Ayn Ra, Nefesh Gavoah, Ruach Gavoah, all of these things, who do you remember? Talmidav shel Bil'am. Shel Bil'am. Talmidav shel Bil'am. Not a good guy. Talmidav shel Bil'am. So I heard once from my Rebbe almost 50 years ago. Why did the Mishnah, since when does the Mishnah tell us? Why does the, why does the Mishnah have to say, if you have these midot, you tell me dav shel Avraham. If you have those midot, you tell me dav shel Bilam. Just say in the Mishnah, what are the good midot and what are the bad midot and so. No. All of a sudden, me tell me dav shel Avraham Avinu. Me tell me dav shel Bilam Harasha. Since when does the, the Mishnah talk in such a way? It's good, it's bad. So I heard from my rabbis, I started with Kosh Levrach. He was once talking about this on Purim, and he said this when I was in his house. I think he said that he heard it from his Rebbe, who was a great Sadiq of Shimon Shkup. I don't know if you ever heard the name. He said that in this world, there are two Rosh Yeshiva. Well, we have Baruch Hashem many, but there really, really are two Rosh Yeshiva. Or if you like, there are two Admorim. Or if you like, there are two Babas. Whatever you like. There are two Rosh Yeshiva in the world. One, his name is Avram Avinu. The other one, his name is Bilam Harasha. Because there are two Yeshivot in the whole world. There are two Batla Midrashim. There's Am Yisrael and there's Palestine. You understand? There's Avram Avinu and the followers of Avram Avinu. There's those who, when they're in this world, they sign up that they want to register and belong to the yeshiva of Avraham Avinu. What's the yeshiva of Avraham Avinu? What is that? What's that yeshiva like? Ah, ayin tova, chesed, ahava, love. Look how beautiful the Jewish people are. Yafa adrayati, yafa adrayati. Do you see what's going on all over the world? With Jews everywhere in the world, all the walls that were standing between us have broken, have fallen down. Every Jew is running to hug another Jew, to give to another Jew. All the, all the tzedakah, all the, the thousands and thousands of apartments that people are giving their own apartments for the refugees from Sterot and from the kibbutzim and from the yishuvim, that they're giving their places up. My daughter in Yushalayim, she's with the other women from, from her community, from Isaiah Birah. They're going every single day. They're going there and they're helping to babysit and to give toys and to help the, the mothers there because the husbands are either dead or the husbands are on the front. And they're helping there with the children. And they're giving them life. Because the children of Avram Avinu are good. And the children of Avram Avinu give life. And the children of Avram Avinu are filled with love and are filled with chesed. And never, ever has it been so clear. Which yeshiva do you belong to? Who do you follow? Do you follow Avram Avinu? Or do you follow Bilam Harasha? The followers of Bilam Harasha, we know who they are. They make believe they use all different kinds of terms. They call Zionism, apartheid. They have many, many, many... The snake has many lishonot. But the language of Bilam HaRasha is the ugliness, the anger, the hatred of Bilam HaRasha. The whole world now is being tested because Mashiach is about to come. And the test of the world right now is which yeshiva do you belong to? Who's your Rosh Yeshiva? 
Don't, don't play games with me. Don't tell me a little bit like this, a little bit like that. I like Avram Avinu, but I also like Bilam. I feel bad for them. I like this, I like that. No, 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 no. Olam Barur. Not no Olam Hafuch. Olam Barur. A clear world. The world has never been so clear. It's never been so clear what's good, what's evil, what's right, what's wrong. And all of us are sitting back and wondering, how could it be that people in universities, colleges, how could it be the Western people that they're, that they're running after these things, that, they, that they're marching in parades with who? With who? With the Talmudim of Bilam HaRasha, Bilam HaRasha himself never thought of such evil like these Rishayim. Yemach Shemam. Never thought of such evil. But this is what's happening now. Yafa'ad Ra'ayati. Because before October 7th, Jews, like for many years, are fighting and screaming and yelling. It never was so unclear. He's religious, he's not religious. Akedekach, that on Yom Kippur itself, there were Jews that were tell, tell you that were trying to say some tefillot on Yom Kippur, and there were other Jews that came and were yelling at them and screaming at them to stop davening. To stop the tefillot. On Yom Kippur. That when I was growing up, when I lived in Eretz Israel as a kid, on Yom Kippur, there was no cars, it was quiet, even the Chilonim, our brothers and sisters who were not religious, Kippur. Azmahaya. So before October 7th, there was no Olam Hafuch, and it looked like everything was getting further and further away from Mashiach Sekeinu, further and further away from, from the truth, further from that clarity, and there was more and more of the poison, the venom of the snake of confusion. And Jews are looking at other Jews. He's religious. He's not. He's a Sfardi. He's a Ashkenaz. He's a Chassid. He's not. A, he's a Misnag. This one is a Parsi. This one's a. Uh, this one's a Syrian. This one's a Moroccan. This one's a Taimani. And this one is religious, not religious. This one wears a, a hat. This one wears a kippah. This one doesn't wear anything. This one has tattoos. This one has a ring. This one has a ring. This one is like this. This one's like that. Everybody and everybody screaming and fighting and yelling. So Hashem said, "Must speak." Ad Khan. The world has to be clear. And the second that it became, the second that that happened, that that pogrom, that massacre took place, all of a sudden, every single wall between one Jew and another Jew, the walls fell on the floor. It looked like, what were we talking about? I love you. Yafa adrayati. Yafa adrayati. You're the most beautiful person in the world. Who cares whether the hostage is religious or not religious? Who cares whether the hostage is Fadi or Ashkenazi? Achi. Achoti ra'ayati. What a birur, what a clarification. What a beautiful world it is. Hashem is taking us back to the time of Adam and Rishon before the Chait, and he's flying us over the world, and he's saying it's a beautiful world. And we now know who are the Machrivim and who are the, the Makalkilim. Who are the Talmidim of Bilam Arashah and who are the Talmidim of Avram Avinu. And by Avram Avinu it says that I have over me Makom Lumakom. Because he grew up, Avram Avinu grew up in a crazy world. Avram Avinu grew up in a crazy world, a, a world of Avadah, Zarah, Gilead, Gilead, Arayot, Shvichud, Amim. He grew up in a crazy world. And Avinu was going from place to place. The Ra Birado Leket Chazal tell us, and he saw a place that was on fire. The Tzadikim say that it means that he saw that the world was on fire with all kinds of crazy things. And Avinu was thinking and thinking and asking, and he began to cry out, Yesh Manhig, is there a leader, is there someone who's running this place? Is there a Baal Bira? Is there a Baal Abbas? Is there someone in charge over here? And Hashem came upon him and Hashem appeared to him and said, Ani Baal Habira. Lech Lech Ami Aitzacha. Ani Baal Habira. Because Avon was able to, Avon was able to find in that crazy Olam Hafuch, Avon Avinu was the one who uncovered and revealed the Olam Barur. Of the Hamin Bashem. The Hamin Bashem. What it means to be a man in Bashem. And that's becoming clear now. Every single one of the clips that's coming out, you know that 
You know how many thousands of pairs of tzitzis, of tzitzit, are being sent to the soldiers? Do you know that the non-religious soldiers are, someone told me that he was on the base, and he said that they, that they brought tzitzis from America, and the, and the girl was announcing that, she said, all the religious soldiers come here for your tzitzit. And the, all the non-religious ones start to scream, Mazah. The non-religious, the chilinim, say, what about us? We don't get tzitzis. We don't get tzitzis. These are the same ones who are screaming and marching in Tel Aviv a month ago. Avram Avinu is in the world. I want to share with you something, just another five minutes. Again, Mechila. There's a song, I don't really, I never really listened to this particular group. I understand that they're very popular with young people in America, maybe here also, I don't know. It's, they're wonderful Jews. <clears throat> they're called, the group is called the Eighth Day. You ever hear of it? It came? Eighth Day? I think they're Chabad Hasidim, I think. I want to read with you a few of the words and then tell you a little story. This is the song. I don't know how to sing, so I can't sing it for you. It would be nice if I could, but I'm sure you could listen to it if you put it on. It's called Eighth Day. The group is called Eighth Day, and the song is called Avraham. I'll just read you a few of the words. But the music is very beautiful. Sitting in the hot desert sun, you've been told you'd be on the run, down to Egypt, to Paro's town, to Rome, and Spain, and many other lands. But you opened your doors to tired men, to lonely passerbys and angels from heaven. You're talking about Avramovina, right? Your kindness and your care were known far and wide. Father of a nation, your soul is alive. You hear the words, father of our nation, your soul is alive. Avraham, are we the children that you dreamed of? Are we the shining stars you saw at night? No, if we look at ourselves, do we wonder sometimes, are we the children that you dreamed of? Look at us. We're so messed up. Are we the children that you dreamed of? Are we the shining stars you saw at night? Are we the shining stars that you saw that night? Our father, our pride, we've got your soul inside. Take us home. Although it's been three, I'm skipping, although it's been 3,000 years, and we've been fighting back all the tears, one man's lullaby, a nation will survive. Father of our people, your dream is alive. Avram, are we the children that you dreamed of? Are we the shining stars you saw at night? Our Father, our pride, we've got your soul inside, take us home. Avram, yes, we're the children that you dreamed of. And we're the shining stars you saw at night. Our Father, our pride, we've got your soul inside, take us home. Never before has it been so clear. Our Father, our pride, Avram, we've got your soul inside. Have the Jewish people ever been shining with such beauty the way that they are now? Every single Jew. I said to the children that this today, the children, they're 16, 17 years old, they were telling me how they're nervous, they're anxious. And I said, you know why you're so nervous? So they said, oh, I, I think I know. I said, no, you're nervous because you love Jews so much and you're so worried about them. That's why you're nervous. Because you're such a tzaddik. That's why you're nervous. Our father, our pride, we've got your soul inside. So I want to end with a short story. It's a tiny story. It's a tefillah. And I want you to try to think about making the, your child, if you have, if you're zochet to have children, make your children's world as clear as you can for them, how much you love them. If you're married, make it so clear to your husband, to your wife, how much you love them. Make it so clear to Hashem Yidbarach how much you love him. Make it clear. Olam barur. Let's live in a world that's clear. Ze Hashem ki vinalo. Ze Hashem ki vinalo. So I'll tell you a story. This sounds like it took place probably in the early 1960s in a neighborhood in Yerushalayim that at that time was just a new neighborhood. It was called, it's still called, Bayit Vagan. Okay. Bayit Vagan. And in that neighborhood in Yerushalayim, Bayit Vagan, he was a big, big Rosh Hashiva, a heroic person who went to Siberia for many years. It's strong. Big, big Rosh Hashiva, big Talmud Chacham, big Sadiq. He was in London for some years. His name was Rav Cheskel Avramsky. 
Rav Chaskel Avramsky. And he lived there, at the end of his life, he lived in Bayad Vagan. And one day, Rav Chaskel, Rav Chaskel is walking with one of his Talmidim, and they're talking in Torah, learning, talking. Gemara Rashi Tosf is strong, arguing back and forth. And all of a sudden, Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Chaskel stops. There was a little girl that was sitting on the, on the street, on the curb of the street, and she was crying. So Rabbi Chaskel stopped, and he went over to her, and he asked her in Hebrew, Yalda, Ech Karim Lach, what's your name? She says, Karim Li Shifra. My name is Shifra. The Shifra, Madu Ad Why are you crying? So Shifa says, Rabbeinu, I'm crying because my mother bought me a new dress for the Chagim, and my friend told me that my dress is ugly, and that I'm ugly. So Rabbi Chaskel said to her, listen to me, your name is Shifra, do you know what Shifra means? Shifra means beautiful. Shifra means Shufra, Karta de Shufraya, Shufra means beauty. Your name is Shifra. You're beautiful. Your dress is beautiful. I want you to go home right now and tell your mother, Tagidi la ima, that what? Sheravi Cheskla Ramsky, Amarlach, Shata Yada, Achia Faber Holbait Vagan, Vasimlashla, Achia Faber Holbait Vagan. Go tell your mother that the Rav, Rabbi Cheskla Ramsky, Rabbi Cheskla Ramsky told you that you're the prettiest girl in Bait Vagan. And you have the prettiest dress in all of Bayat Vagan. She got up and she ran off to tell her mother this, the happiest little girl on earth. And then Rabbi Cheskel turned back to the student and said, okay, let's continue where we were talking. And the student was just standing like this. What? And he said, and, the, and Rabbi Cheskel said, what's the matter? Let's talk, we could, let's continue in the Torah. He said, Rabbi, we were in the middle of learning Torah. I just don't understand what that was about that you're spending time talking to some little girl on the street. So if Cheska said to him, you don't understand? You never felt that way yourself? You've never felt ugly? You've never felt low? You never cried? There's a meter that Hashem has, Rabbi Cheska said. We mention it oftentimes when we're at, when Lo'aleinu, it's a funeral, it's a levaya, we mention it. We daven always at the end of speaking at the Hasbeid, we always daven, we ask Hashem, Umacha Hashem Lokim, what? Dim'a? Me'al kol panim. Hashem, we're asking you to erase the tears from the faces of your people. So why shouldn't I be like Hashem? We're asking Hashem to erase our tears. And I saw a little Jewish girl who had tears on her face. And I wanted to be like Hashem. I also wanted to erase a tear from the face of a Jewish girl. And there's no greater miss in the world. So together with all of my brothers and sisters here in Mexico City that were together tonight, that I had the schut to be with you here. Let's ask Avina Shabbat Shemayim. Rabbi Shalom, look at us. Habet mi Shemayim ure'e. Have you ever seen anybody as beautiful as your children? Have you ever seen such beautiful people in the world? Isn't it clear to you how beautiful we are? It was confusing before, but now it's so clear how beautiful we are. Bring us home. Bring the hostages home. Our father, our pride, our brother, soul is inside of us. We're good, we're kind, we're beautiful. We're asking you, Hashem, erase the tears from our faces. Erase the tears from the eyes of those mothers, those fathers who are waiting, from those parents whose children are out on the battlefield who don't know from, me, from one day to the next where their children are. To erase the tears so that we could go running back to Yerushalayim like little Shifra and Bayat Vagan to greet Mashiach Tzakeinu. We should be able to do it together with the Gula Shlema Vamitit Amen Amen Amen.